Hello, everybody. So uh, today, inshallah, I will present an idea as innovative idea and innovative pedagogical approaches in teaching students literacy in higher education. So I'm Dr. Ghada Al-Murshidi, as she mentioned, and I am from the UAE University. So uh, the idea is a useful tool used by teachers to enhance the students' engagement and participation in a classroom. This method is combined by literacy skills like listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills in a visualized form. And that's what is interesting in this method. The students, they like the environment because this environment of the method and the whole process is boosting their problem solving, their reading skills, listening, writing, and also their critical thinking skills. This method was conducted in different countries. So my research aim and objective is I try to understand and assess this idea. I try to identify the benefits and also the challenges of this method and also to assess the perceptions of the students about the videotape story workshop method. So my research questions were around the idea of the method, the students' challenges and benefits, and also their perceptions about the idea. When I went to the literature, I found out that uh, this method, it was originally just the story workshop method. So I tried to add more the video taped to this uh, method. So it is an innovative way. The students can express their uh, stories and they can, you know, uh, include the digital media. So they create and share and uh, also um, share their narrated, uh, like uh, their uh, narrations, their narrative story, the narrated stories through the videos. So they create the videos from their stories. And as we know now, and especially with the pandemic, with the digital age, technology is useful for us as teachers and also for the students. So for this method, the student is not only recalling videos, let's say from YouTube or others, but they are they're creating their own videos and they're creating and constructing their knowledge. So it's good for what? Sharing their ideas and experiences to a broader range of audience. So it's not for their classmates and their teachers, no. They can, you know, especially when it is public, the videos, I mean, you know, they can share it to others. And also, it's beneficial for the teachers because it's like, you know, an instructional tool that, you know, save the efforts also and the time for the teachers because, you know, they can also bring all these videos that created also by students and by other teachers to share it with their students. And also the students can, you know, share their ideas, discuss it, and participate in a classroom and, you know, bring up more ideas to the classroom that related to the authentic materials and related to the reality and to, to the real world. If we think about the teacher perception regarding this method, as, as we said, they feel it is more like, you know, innovative ways to present like a new content to the uh, students and with the help of the students, because as we, did, as we said, the students are also constructing knowledge and sharing their experiences. So they try to, you know, bring, bridge the gap between the students, you know, previous knowledge and also to the uh, students like, you know, current knowledge and constructing a new knowledge. And as we said, teachers can connect with other educational institutions to form more collaborative workspace. Through this process, the students they try to you know, organize, plan, share their ideas and knowledge to the others. So through what 
through uh, doing their you know tasks and concepts you know through the digital storytelling. So as we said, it's like you know uh, it's a source for strong bonding between the teachers and the students because you know they are working collaboratively together to build up and construct and create their videos at the end as a product. If we think about the student perception regarding this method, so they feel it is what more productive for them. You know, through this uh, method, we have to train our students because, you know, for example, if we have some students doesn't know how to use like, you know, a type of technology or program. So we have to help them and assist them and train them how to use this uh, program. The students, how they do it, so they start with preparing their personal narrative, for example, and incidents, and also sometimes share others, you know, dramatic events or historical documentaries, and then they start working as a team to create their videos. So, as we said, it's what is kind of a powerful instructional tool because, you know, sharing those digital stories through the internet allow the student to learn and also communicate with others, especially now with the social media and social networks. So they got like, you know, the feedback, not only from their peers in the classroom or the teachers, also from others around the world. And through this, we know the students try to, you know, uh, adapt to the 21st century schools through the whole process of learning all these kind of literacy skills, visual skills, and also the information media and the technology. So what are the benefits and the challenges of this method? This method allows teachers and learners to collaborate together. They can work in groups and do different projects. The students, you know, they interact, they participate, they collaborate, and also sometimes if they need some assistance from others outside, let's say the university or their context or the classroom, they can take that help and it is okay. With this one, we have to think about some of the cultural values and heritage that the students can, you know, share through their classroom. We think about ethical consideration, for example, when they create their videos, what they can include, what they can, you know, cannot include. So um, at the start, the students feel it is challenging task to uh, create all these kind of videos, but after a while, you know, after they, you know, got trained and all that, they, they like it more. So as we said at the beginning, they feel nervous, but after that, you know, uh, they start, you know, to feel more comfortable to do and create their videos and share it with, you know, others and all that. So what was my methodology? It was a mixed method. I had the quantitative with the qualitative using the uh, SPSS and also using, you know, analyzing all the interviews. So it was, I started this idea from 2012 till 2020. And now also I'm continuing this method with my other students. So I have lots of data that I shared in one of my published papers and I'm continuing to conduct this research. So I have my primary data that I collected from the university and I have my uh, sampling it was 20 uh, hand, like 201 students. And I have the survey as five point liquid scale and I analyze it as I said, using the SPSS. So this is some of the questions if you can see. About the students perception about the idea. So what was my result that connected with other researchers also results that, you know, um, some uh, students like the collaboration and participation with the uh, teachers, uh, the students try to, you know, prepare for their stories before, you know, they, you know, create their videos. Sorry, students, five, five minutes left, Dr. Gadda, thank you. The students like, you know, uh, sharing their ideas, 
their uh, experiences with others, not only with the classmate, because you know they share it in social media like YouTube's and others. And it's all based on ethical consideration, as I mentioned, and also with cultural considerations. In a classroom, the students like you know the participation, the discussion through the whole process. Um, at the beginning, we said they were nervous, but at the end, you know, uh, they used to, you know, to discuss, speak, and, you know, start creating the videos and also share it. And they start to, you know, accept the critique from others. So it's good for the students. So now they are, they were like, you know, at the end, they were less nervous. And the students, you know, were flexible and also the teachers. So, as we said, the students is not only like, you know, presenting like, you know, uh, a video from YouTube or others, but they are creating and constructing their knowledge through the videos. So they show their skills also in techn as technical skills. So uh, this experience for the students were like interesting for them, as I said, through the whole uh, through the whole process. They faced some uh, linguistic barriers at the beginning, but then they were like you know learning through the whole uh, process. Because you know even for uh, creating the videos, for example, they were like you know rehearse doing like lots of rehearsal to create these videos also. And uh, at the end, uh, they improve also uh, literacy skills and also academic performance. So as we said, it is what like a collaborative approach for the students and between teachers and students and also others. As we said, some students struggled from uh, the start because you know they didn't have the high quality digital, uh, digital like you know uh, experience. But later on, they start to develop those kind of skills that they needed, and they decide what skills they want, what program they want to use. So to discuss like the, the whole idea of this result and discuss the um, the outcomes of this uh, research as this method uh, is interesting and we can use it. From this method, we can, you know, uh, at the beginning indicate what were like, you know, the common linguistics and cultural barriers, technical technological barriers, and we try to train our students to support them. The student at the end, they had, you know, uh, some positive attitude to the skill. Uh, they believe that, you know, they uh, build up their knowledge and their academic skills were improved. And as you know, especially with uh, this situation with the COVID-19, we use and we can use this method also and it's also enjoyable for the students especially when they can see their uh, product at the end and they can share it with their you know colleagues and they share it with other classmates in the future uh, for sure and that's what i'm doing we can use different you know um kind of you know uh, like uh, SPSS for analysis, I mean like programs. Uh, we can use like in vivo for interviews analysis. We can use, you know, uh, PLS. So more like, you know, uh, different kind of uh, statistical and also uh, conducting, you know, the analysis for both the qualitative and also quantitative. So to end up uh, this 
uh, we noticed from some of the results that you know, 82% uh, of the students enjoyed learning through watching videos, 50% enjoy learning via creating the videos, 60% of the students believe that you know, they would like to use this method when you know, learning other like courses, so they can use it for other uh, courses. So uh, most students had what positive attitudes toward uh, this method at the end, I mean, because as we said from the beginning, it was not easy, it was challenging for them. And it takes time for them to, you know, got experience and learn and adopt all these, you know, technical skills and also the, the language that they need for these videos and for the topic for sure. Because as I said, they start with maybe like, you know, reading articles. It depends on the learning outcomes of this course and the learning outcomes of the topics. So they read articles, read uh, maybe news, to collect data and collect information for this. And this is all my uh, reference. Thank you. So here is my name and my email. And uh, this uh, I have one of these papers as published, so I can share it later on if you want it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Garda, for that really interesting presentation. Um, and now we're going to move on to our next presenter, who is uh, Dr.